me. I'm Ron Funches, and we're all working on getting better. Ooh, whenever I'm ready, we will go. So let me sit up straight and work on my posture. Get everything together and try not to be squeaky. I hope the lighting's okay. And that I don't laugh directly in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to episode 20, episode 20 of Getting Better with Ron Funches. I'm Ron Funches, that's my name and this is my podcast and I want to wish you a happy new year. Um, it's New Year's Eve currently, we are doing this podcast live at my house from the national uh, fourth annual vision board ron funches vision board spectacular new year's eve party it's something we do um for the past four years it started with just me <laughs> first year was just me it was a small turnout and then the second year is me friend gabe third year more friends coming fourth year we got our biggest party we got a few people coming we're gonna uh, eat some good food we're gonna have some some good desserts we're gonna listen to music we're gonna write our goals down we're gonna share our goals out loud with each other um and we're gonna play some uno and then we're gonna get fucked up and dance so it sounds like a hell of a new year's eve i encourage you uh to to make your own new year's eve traditions i think everybody gets caught up in these like oh i gotta go out there and party and find somebody to kiss and change my whole life around when it's usually it's like hey motherfucker the the, the 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 bitch you were in december is the same motherfucker you're gonna be in january so uh don't just think you're gonna change your life upside down in one day it's built little by build it little build it up build it up you know and and reach new ground that's what we're trying to do this new year i hope everybody has a very successful uh 2019 you get all the goals that you want to reach or at least get closer to your goals um i hope that drama and struggle that you had in the past i hope that get left behind i hope the people who caused you drama and struggle get left behind and a lot of times it's hard to cut out people because uh, we don't be like oh this person's good or evil oh they couldn't possibly be evil people can just be good for you and bad for you and if someone's not good for you in 2018 don't bring them into 2019 what you want to do that for that don't make no sense don't re-up that lease move on find a new place and get your life together and keep it going and moving forward we all have to do that um i'm i'm feeling okay i'm in the middle of them recovering from my surgery uh if i look puffy at all it's because if you're watching this on the youtube version it's because i'm wearing a, a compression vest right now i'm basically a, a football player slash superhero under my outfit but if you punch me in the chest one time i will probably cry and go to the hospital um, <laughs> well, I'm feeling very happy. I'm I'm in force. The, the one of the best things about this surgery is I can't a um I was bedridden completely for about three days, and then I've been pretty much homebound for a week and a half um for, for a few more days, and um, it's really forced me, who is a person that really likes to go 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 and um always work 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 to really just sit back and um contemplate and reflect on the last year i mean perfect time and you know the end of the year to, to really reflect about um how i feel about this year the things that i accomplished the uh people that i'm grateful for and also the mistakes and the um issues that i repeated that i don't want to do in 2019 the cycles that i want to break in 2019 and i got a few of them and, and we'll talk about them a little bit more later we're gonna have a great episode it's gonna be a little different um since people are coming over for the vision board party basically we'll grab a random few friends bring them in see what their dreams and goals are for 2019 what they're hopeful for and grateful for in 2018 and and we'll go from there we'll have a great time it's gonna be a different fun type of episode and i hope you enjoy it um i'm feeling good i'm gonna tell you i'm really really happy about last week's episode chris delia it's our most listened to episode uh by far so i really appreciate him coming through and all the new fans that came through from that welcome if you listen to that and then they're now listening to this episode and then going oh fuck uh this isn't like what i thought it would be at all 
and maybe you're tuning out right away and you moved on and that's okay i don't need you uh, i don't need everybody to be my fans i'm only down with cool people who are trying to get better and and and, and want this message if you want this message it's for you if it's not it's not for you that's the one thing i'm trying to really take to heart as my special is getting ready to come out and i'm seeing more and more comments and people talking about it and some people being like oh it's the best thing i ever seen and other people being like this guy ain't funny at all why is anybody laughing in this crowd and i have to go like hey they're both right you know like uh if if i'm i'm the one thing about me i know for sure is that i'm unique and i'm uniquely me and i don't fucking compromise and i don't give a shit if you like me or not i like me that's what i care about and so um if you think if you think my comedy sucks if you w listen to my uh our special if you watch it on comedy central january 4th 11 p.m coming up real real soon january 4th 11 p.m comedy central please watch it and if you hate it just know it's not for you i'm probably not for you i'm gonna get better maybe you'll turn around on it in the future maybe you'll grow into me but uh i think people are too soon and too everybody's so like this sucks or this is awesome and it's just like it'd be a lot better if you just go i like this i don't like this you know you're not the end all be all you're not the judge on things you're not the fucking judge jury and executioner on anything you're just one motherfucker with one opinion just like i'm one motherfucker with one opinion neither one of us matters and we're so therefore equality <laughs> equality is knowing that everybody around us ain't shit including ourselves um and that's important to remember and very very important to remember because i know like we see a lot now like with the louis ck thing uh if you don't know louis ck did a set recently that got recorded and bootlegged which i don't recommend as a as a thing about comedy don't be going recording people's sets moving on when you hear the set you're like oh shit this is some weird wild shit in my opinion i don't like it because it's um him just holding up old stereotypical viewpoints and trying to act like it's edgy and that's not edgy that's the least edgy thing in the world uh in the set that i heard it was mostly him taking down transgender people and taking down people who are victims of school shooting you know the most powerful among us <laughs> so you know the people who really need to be taken down a peg you know you should protect people like that protect people who are in harm's way those aren't the people you do jokes at i'm not trying to aim any jokes at any transgender person i'm definitely not trying to aim any joke at anyone who has been the victim of a traumatic school shooting uh, from one thing i saw when he was all like oh the whole generation is boring and they want to go out there and have speeches instead of going out there and finger fucking people and, and they're all weird and 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 and, and, and yelling at people all the time it's like yeah motherfucker because they're scared shitless because they're scared that they're going to die just by going to school one day that's not boring you're boring you old white fat fuck and i don't mean that against any old white fat fucks that i know i know a lot of old white fat fucks that are cool as fuck so i don't want to put them down by saying that but what i want to say is like don't be a troll person that's just pulling out negativity don't be a bad person i never thought his comedy was great personally never thought never enjoyed it seemed like every joke he was writing was him just being like hmm how can i say nigger on stage and everybody be cool with it and it seemed like everybody who was really into his comedy was like hmm how can i listen to somebody say nigger on stage and everybody laughs including the black people so i don't have to feel guilty that's what i felt his comedy was like and there were a lot of people who were into that comedy evolved things move on and now he old he a dinosaur i'm the new positivity optimism bringing people up i will say they theirs or thems because i don't give a fuck because i'm smart you won't want me to call you you if, if i made a mistake and i call you a him and you're like oh i prefer she oh okay guess what i i'm smart so i can fucking figure that out right away and adapt you don't like it so i won't do it my son has autism we know that if you listen to this podcast my son has autism he's also a teenager which means he does teenage rebellion his current teenage rebellion is that he changes his name just about every two or three months uh it was and it's usually from some television show that he's enjoying he was bart 
from The Simpsons for a while. Then he was Brendan Small from Home Movies for a while. Then he was a person called Dark Boomerang Bro, which was really difficult to say out in public. Uh, <laughs> you know, everybody's a little bit weird looking at you weird when you're like, hey, Dark Boomerang Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's Chris and guess what I call him that because that's what he asked me to because that's what makes him feel good because he's going through something right now he is a teenager going through his own issues that I don't understand he has autism when he's going through his own issues there that I don't understand and so if he feels more comfortable if he doesn't currently like the name that I gave him and he would prefer it if I call him Chris or P or, or Brendan or Dark Boomerang bro I can do that because I'm not a fucking idiot I can adapt and move on that's not a problem. I just tell him, hey, when you go to school, do you mind if they call you by your regular name? Because I don't want to have them have to be all confused. So when you go to school, you're this regular name. When you come home, I will call you whatever you want. Hopefully one day you'll go back to your regular name because I think your regular name is beautiful. And that's why I picked it out. But that's not my decision. And that's my whole point or er, 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 not my point, but my, my issue with shit like this is that it's like the same people who act like they're being edgy and act like they're being smarter than everyone else because they won't adapt or dumb as fuck. It's fucking Darwinism, motherfucker. Evolve or die. Move along. And things are changing and things are going in a way that I like. More progression, more equality, more feminism, more people looking out for each other. And if you feel if you feel like shit's changing for you and you feel threatened because nobody wants to let you call them uh the, the r word or the f word or the n word if you want down that hill that's fine but what i'm liking right now you go out there and you you talk about the wrong transgender and you need label them the wrong pronoun they're gonna punch you in your motherfucking mouth and you deserve it i hope you get it <laughs> I went off on a tangent there that I did not expect, but I liked it. I hope you did. Let's get back into the program, what I'm happy about and what I'm excited about. Um, whoa, what I'm really, really excited about, I got a random tweet the other day from a friend of mine um, who's an actor. You guys might know him. Um, I'm going to try to get him on the podcast as well. His name is Mel Rodriguez. Um, I worked with him on a show called Enlisted. He was also in um, Breaking Bad. He was in um, a show called Getting On. And he was um, Todd. Um, uh, I think his name was Todd. Anyway, I don't know. I remember I watched a bunch of episodes. I liked it at the time and I forgot. But he was on Last Man on Earth. And he's a very, 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 very talented actor. Very funny gentleman. And we worked together several years ago. And when we worked together, we were both um, 300 pound plus for sure. And I went through my, my changes and my, my, my things. And I was able to lose my weight. And we, we were staying in touch, but we didn't really talk that much. And then a couple of days ago, I get a tweet from him. It's this picture. And the and motherfucker's lost like 80, 100 pounds for sure. And, and he's looking good. And he's like, hey. Um, when I worked with the, on the show called Enlisted, there was this guy named Ron Funches, and I and I, he inspired me, and now I, I lost hundred pounds. Man, man, if that didn't fucking make my day, that's the thing. More than like like my jokes, think I'm funny, think I'm handsome. I love that. Uh, <laughs> think I'm charming. I like that. But most of all, man, if I can make somebody else's life better, and more positive, give them, help them get a couple more years with their kids because of the way I'm living, it's like, fuck, I got to keep going. I got to keep pushing, which which leads me to, to my main um, point of my vision board this year. My main goal of my vision board is, is commitment. I want to be committed. Um, I feel like I've made a lot of accomplishments and I've done a lot of things um while still being kind of one foot in one foot out i keep one foot in on the leading man thing where i work out and i diet and i feel good and then the next few weeks i'm like hoarding cookies i'm eating a bunch of candy and then and then i spiral for a little bit and then i get back on it and then so it's always this yo-yo of me going up to 20 pounds going down 30 pounds back up 20 pounds and i'm sick of that i don't want to do that anymore i don't want to as my trainer says it's like we're climbing a mountain and when i was down at the bottom of that hill and close to to, to maybe having some health issues that could take my life i was motivated to get up that hill 
But now I'm two thirds up the way of that hill and the summit is steep. The air is getting fucking thin and and sandwich sounds good as a motherfucker. And I got to remember to stay committed and, and to stay what I'm about. And that's the one thing that I've been focusing on from the people I've been around um, traveling with people like Conan or, or, or um, learning and working occasionally with people like Seth Rogen and, and, and other people who I really look up to. And I see how they work and I see how they eat. And I see that they are the same type of people as me, that they would prefer to be in fat burgers and, and Carl's Jr. all day, but they don't because they have goals and they have things they're trying to accomplish. And, um, and you just have to change your life and know what's for you. And those things aren't for me anymore. Good things are for me. That's one thing I have to give myself permission to let good things be for me and not act like I'm just robbing a bank or act like I'm or that lightning is going to strike me because oh uh, things are going too good the bottom's got to fall out the bottom ain't gonna fall out on this I'm fucking committed I'm gonna keep writing I'm solid I'm good at my job I'm respected I am who I am and I don't lie about it so it is what it is I don't try to present as myself as something bigger than I am I know I do this podcast and we do advice and do stuff but I'm struggling just like anybody else i come from struggle i've been through shit i've been through shitty relationships i've been through being a shitty person there was a time in my life where i would have said that i was not a good person i was a uh, um I was very selfish and just about myself and and very lazy and waiting for something to be handed for me. And um, because I felt because of my station in life and things that had happened to me and my mom being in an abusive relationship and all this stuff, I was like, oh, I deserve, I deserve life to give me good things. And one thing I learned is that no one's coming to save you. Not a single person's coming to save you. I think a lot of the issues that we have going on politically right now is that people get easily tricked and easily swayed by someone who they think is going to come and save them. And no one's coming to save you ever, ever, ever. You have to save yourself. You have to put in the work. And it can seem far away. I've been posting a lot of things um a part of my vision board plan and we're going to get into how to make a vision board and and, the, and what we're going to put on our vision board it's probably gonna be a long podcast today uh but part of my my process to, with my vision board has been adding new things i've always been putting in goals and putting out things and i was thinking i was like hey you don't give yourself props for the things you did accomplish and the things that you're happy about so i instead of just making a vision board of things i want to accomplish i started off by making a list of things that i was happy that i did accomplish this year and things that i was grateful for and i won't go over the whole list you can see it on my instagram at ron funch if you want to go look at it um but um I, I will go over a few things i'm very very grateful for this podcast i was looking for um something where i could have a home and really present what i'm about and what i do and what i talk about anyway like this is that's the whole thing about this podcast that i like is that I'm not like some preachy weird guy who's just like, oh, positivity all the time. And then I go change and, 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 and like sw and, and shitty when we turn the camera off. This is the shit I've always been talking about. That the things I was afraid to talk about because I think I thought people would think I was weird because this is what I believe. And this is uh, I believe in energy and positivity and I believe in karma. And these are all things that I, I figured people would be like, oh, you're a fucking weirdo. And a lot of people are. A lot of people are. But that's okay. I am a fucking weirdo. But I'm not going to stop being me because f from the 35 years I've been on this planet, one thing I learned is being me has turned out to be very profitable and very satisfying. So <laughs> I don't see a reason to change it up now. You tell me you don't like my comedy. You tell me you don't like what I talk about. Fuck you. I bought a house with it. Who cares? <laughs> so talk to my accountant. Um, but in 2019, that was another one of my goals is I'm not going to talk about money much anymore. Do money jokes because I think it's crass. It made sense when I was money was new for me and I didn't had it. It was like winning the lotto, you know. You should be like, ah, I won the lotto. But then if you want to keep your money, you gotta shut the fuck up after a few months so everybody knows you don't have money. So uh, uh, that's my new plan is to just be a little bit more classy about it and not care about it because I don't have that much and who gives a shit anyway. 
And it only it only poses as a way to separate us because then people think when I'm giving advice or giving um just giving advice that they're like, okay, well, sure, you can do it. You do, 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 do. you do this. You got the money. You're on TV, and it's just like I wasn't born on television. You dumb fuck. Nobody handed it to me. Nobody was like, oh man, you know what we want to do? We want to put your 360 pound awkward ass on television. No, I had to go step by step, work by work, open mic by open mic, competition by competition, showcase by showcase until I got here. I didn't just wake up in my house. And that's the whole thing I talk about. You, you, you can do it. You can do anything that you set your fucking, like, like the water boy. You can do it. Uh, you can say anything you set your mind to as long as it's within your, your, your natural your what what you're naturally talented at what your natural talents provide you with and you work hard and and sometimes it might not work out for you but i promise you you'll have a better life no matter what the stress is the same whether you're working for somebody else or working for yourself the stress to pay your bills is the goddamn same but i'd rather put it on me than some boss who's going to shut down the company two years from now and not even tell me about it while they go to tahiti somewhere that's just how i feel (laughs) <laughs> what else am i grateful for i'm grateful for my health that's for sure um i, um, I feel a little bit down that i, cause I was hoping to can move my way down and one of my vision board goals this year is to get under 200 pounds and that did not happen if anything i'm like 235 240 right now and so i'm heavy um but i feel really focused and, and again committed I'm, I'm about it again i'm about it and i feel like next year uh, especially with the surgery and stuff that's one thing that the surgery i was hoping would give me is that seeing seeing some of that skin removed and seeing the real changes and seeing the muscle underneath yeah it's motivated me to be like fuck i want to get there 100 percent now and see how i want to get as healthy as i can within that's one of my vision board goals is to be the healthiest i have ever been by the end of the year and just and then just coast <laughs> Eat, you know that's the whole thing now if you get real healthy in your mid-30s and you just coast oh wait you be fine you know you be chilling you 40 45 all these other dudes is looking old you still look handsome you could have sex with anybody you want that's the long game everybody wants to have all these sex with these girls in their 20 wait 30 years wait till you in your 50s then you could have any 40 year old you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just really really um i'm gr- just grateful i'm grateful for a lot of things i accomplished um i don't want to go into a long tangent on each one so i'm just gonna say a bunch of random things i'm grateful for i'm grateful for uh, the people who put me on tv shows this year um i now i've been on every major network on nbc abc cbs fox which was a goal of mine that was on my vision board and i did that a, third lead in a movie i was really happy about that my robot i'm so happy about that that's one of the things i want to stay committed to is to make sure that that goes well because um when you know you know you know (laughs) and i know i found someone really special and someone that i want to be with and um well things continue to move and grow and i'm not like you know calling it right now but um i know that one of my goals for next year is to make her happy for the next year and and um build our relationship together because i really really like being with her and she posted her first picture on instagram together you can't see her face but you can see that ass (laughs) and you can see why i am a blessed lucky boy And then just people I'm grateful for. I'm real grateful for Conan. I'm real grateful for Halston. I'm real grateful for my mom and my family who really keep this place afloat while I'm traveling all the time and my managers and my agents and all that, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to make this sound like I'm doing some type of Oscar speech. Oh. <laughs> I want to thank the Academy. Um, <laughs> and then the whole thing I like, a friend of mine, um, Eden, uh she posted about what was your 
what was the thing that you were sad about the thing that you did last year that really made you that you don't want to carry into the next year your your mistakes your errors and so i sat and i thought about that and and i came up with a couple um i just definitely um like you know i'm happy with my health and stuff but the weight thing I, i'm gonna consider that a failure because i wanted to make a goal and i didn't i didn't reach there and i know it was my fault halfway through the summer looking great looking amazing you can see it in my giggle fit promotional pics january 4th 11 p.m comedy central uh but then it started slipping off and relaxing a bit and started being because it became left of a life or death situation when it was 360 it was a life or death situation got down to 220 feeling healthy it was okay but you know i know 40 50 years old i don't want to be 220 i want to be 200 190 195 around there and i just want to push it and i'm going to be a leading man i'm uh, that's what i want to be i feel like i can i feel like i can be a lead actor in a movie tv shows and i'm going to push myself to reach those goals we talk about that all the time i don't need to keep going over that um and then um the other one was that i don't want to do favors anymore um i think this year i caught myself end up doing favors for people each time I did a favor for them and never it either was never fun or um, I found out later when I needed a favor from them they didn't return them and I think that's just how it works um, you know do the things that you're drawn to do the things that make you happy that doesn't mean just do all fun things like eat ice cream and and and, and, and Tostitos pizza rolls I don't know why that's the thing that I think is fun off the top of my head <laughs> <laughs> but I had a very specific idea of what fun is. Uh, ice cream and Tostitos pizza rolls, which is fun. I mean, you throw in some fucking fighting video games in there, a little Dragon Ball Z, some Tekken. That's a hell of a Eve. Uh, but I'm, so you're going to do things that build towards what you want to do. You know, like sometimes I take roles in, sh in movies and shows that I know that I don't necessarily want that role, but I know that it'll give me ex expertise. It'll give me experience, especially movie stuff. I want to end up writing my own movies and I don't know how to do that. So I need to go be in movies and see the production and see how it goes and, and pay attention and don't bother everybody, all you know, the writers, but I keep my, my mouth shut and I keep my ears open, pick up things so that I can hopefully hopefully make my own movies it's how i learned how to write my own television shows a few years ago i had no idea how to write a tv show i didn't know what a treatment was i didn't know what a pitch doc was i didn't know what an outline was i didn't know how to use final draft now another one of my accomplishments this year i wrote two television shows and i sold them both uh, one got passed on one as you guys know is the project about me and my son and hopefully hopefully we will hear about that within the next month or so uh but i sold them and i made i made money writing tv shows and that is the beautiful feeling to me that's something i wanted since i was a kid and so i have to be grateful for that and not get caught up on the fact that they passed on the one and that they haven't picked up the second one yet so half the time i'm like oh they're gonna who they don't care they're not gonna pick it up but I think somebody will. If they don't, somebody else will. If not, um, energy never dies. You know, ask for real. <laughs> That's why he never ages. Because energy never dies. So um, something will come out of these projects no matter what. I get better no matter what. So that's the one thing I always say to people is if you feel frustrated, keep writing, keep pushing. Because you get better. And as long as you're getting better what else is there my money all that stuff fame especially fuck fame like you know i'm not fa i'm barely i would say i am c level I and mean, i mean accurately giving myself a level here i'm not d level i know that because i know d levels but i'm probably a c level comedian not comedian i'm an a level comedian i am a fucking s level comedian uh but i'm a c level celebrity and um I don't give a shit about that. I give a shit about money. There's a lot of money to be made as a C level comedian. Or, ah, I said it again. You never believe that. A level comedian. <laughs> you know what? A level celebrity. Fuck it. <laughs>
People just don't know yet. I'm an A-level comedian, A-level celebrity, A-level actor, and I'm waiting for people to figure it out. I'm growing into them like you grow into your shoes when you're a teenager because, you know, if you buy them the right size when you're 15, you're only going to get them for six months. Sometimes you got to be willing to step in some shoes that make your ass feel awkward and grow into that shit. That's what I do when I did the third lead on that movie. I was scared shitless. I didn't know anything about how to do that, but I told them up front, I'm going to be scared shitless. And they were very happy helpful with me and it was really working and i know a lot i booked another movie i don't even tell you guys that i'm grateful for that we don't know what's gonna go hopefully <laughs> we will bank some podcast episodes up for you guys because the next two or three weeks i'm gonna be shooting a movie with adam divine uh michael Pena, some other people um I'm not going to say any other the name of it or anything because they didn't announce it yet. So I'm pretty sure they probably don't want me to. But guess what? You get exclusives on this podcast. <laughs> but I'm going to go shoot a movie for a couple of weeks. And it also makes me stoked because Adam Devine was one of the first people I ever got to act with. Doing a sketch with. Doing his Adam Devine house party. Doing sketches there was one of the first times I ever acted. And so now, years later, to be in a movie with him full circles well i believe except for we gonna keep them circles going uh so i'm just very very happy very happy about that i love being able to sit back i love that robot's back she was out of town and back home for uh a week or so and I, that's when it really cemented i'm like man you have made yourself invaluable in this household we miss you not only did i miss you my mom missed you my son doesn't miss anybody so but that's <laughs> <laughs> that's probably more of the autism than anything uh but, <laughs> but i missed her dearly and so uh, i'm just th my main thing that i learned this year is that uh i put in a lot of great work i got my special my special is the big thing i'm grateful for giggle fit january 4th 11 p.m i'm getting a lot of great response for it already a lot of people retweeting about it the rock fucking retweeted about it rick flair's retweeted about it i've had no people who have seen it and they just they just seem to really like it and, and i know i love it so uh, uh overall right now i'm just kind of over the moon with like gratefulness and and, and and happiness and i'm not i'm not looking for big changes i'm just looking for it to stay committed to my life how it is and keep pushing touring with my friends um being um supportive of my friends and helping them build stuff because i've as i was putting it um to to robot yesterday like i got everything i need right now i don't have everything i want but i have everything i need and i need to help my friends get all the things they need right now so that's my next plan I'm trying to tour out more with my friends build everything up else up and uh do it like a build a kevin hart type team you know without the homophobia <laughs> but to each their own maybe that's his religious views and i don't i don't judge people's religious views i just disagree with them sometimes um but we're gonna make a vision board we're gonna bring in friends we'll talk about what they've been grateful for and what we're gonna do but i want to show you guys my vision board if you're watching this on the youtube this gives you a good reason to tune in and watch it on the youtube actually uh if you, and if you are please subscribe it's a way that we can get some money appreciate that if you hit subscribe and hit them likes hit them likes hit them upward hit them thumbs ups so here's my vision board for last year halston you let me know when it's in a good spot up up good all right so this is my vision board for last year um you can look at it as you want i don't give a shit that's one of the things about being a vision board you gotta be uh able to say your dreams out loud and and put them out there it's a mix of things um vision boards can be a lot of things a lot of people do just straight collage it's just a lot of different pictures um i'm not great at collage as you can probably tell so i like to do a mix of collage and then a, a list that I can look at and I can go through and just mark through. Um, and then I kind of come up with a theme. Like this year's theme for my vision board is commitment. Um, last year, my theme was take charge. It's about being a boss. I felt like I had, um, I feel like I'm a leader, part of the leading man thing. And I felt like I had been slacking off on, on taking charge and being a boss and being a leader. So this year I was all about taking charge. And I did. I mean, I had opportunity to do a half hour special. Instead, I took charge and made my own hour special. I made my own podcast. Um, I got the girl that I wanted. I've been doing a lot of things to take charge. Wrestling ring over here for when I went to wrestling school. Uh, the Comedy Central logo. We got this logo here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> 
and just a lot of things. And then I just go over my my goals, my vision boards from last year, and I'll tell you, I will tell you how they worked out. Uh, okay, so the first one is to get uh, my show, which I will not name to you currently, but to get it to series, and it's a hit. We're currently in still in the process of that goal. It's an active goal. Um, we're just waiting to hear back. Hopefully, it'll happen. Uh, Beyonce for Boys, which was the original title for my special Giggle Fit. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, that's a hit. Right now, I love it. We'll see what people think. We'll find out. Uh, if you ask my guess, I think people are going to like it, and I think some people are really going to hate it and think it's stupid and not get it. Um, I hopefully in a weird situation, I feel like the Louis CK thing is going to be helpful because the way I do comedy is completely 180 from that. And if people are looking for that, um, hopefully they enjoy what I do. But then there's also people who are going to straight up be like, you're a, a punk little sissy. Heard it my whole life. Don't give a shit. Look at my girl. <laughs> I wanted to get under 200 pounds, failed. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to wrestle independent match, mm, didn't do it. I went to wrestling school for three months, learned it wasn't for me. I met a lot of good friends, learned a lot about respect and, and, and sportsmanship. So I consider that a success. Uh, I want to get my son into UCLA, still working on that. I wanted to go to Japan for Wrestle Kingdom 13. Specials coming out the same day. Couldn't do that, but hopefully I'm going to do it for Wrestle Kingdom 14. I want to be a positive force in the world. I think I nailed it. Hopefully from the things that people are showing me, like my friend Mel, my friend Ruthie, all the people who tell me that I make a difference in their life. And they don't know, like, that as much as they say I make a difference to them, like, that, like, makes my fucking year when people let me know that I help them out and I help change them out, change them, because I have people who help change me, and that's one of the things I don't get, and I do, but I guess I do get, because I was, I had a negative mindset. If I listened to my podcast in the past, I'd have been like, this smug little piece of shit, what does he know? But I know, because I was broke as shit, and I didn't have nothing, and I could quite easily be in a fucking gutter instead of being in my own house so i do know and hopefully i'm helping some people and if i'm not helping you fine but i, I i'm not for you then i'm for the people that that were looking for this and this is what they needed and i hope i'm providing something for you i want to write a movie getting ready to start do that i didn't do it last year but i want to start this year i want to do a new half hour of material from my special moving on from my special mm, not quite there probably have about 12 15 minutes so we're about halfway there um so that's good that's better than i thought that made me feel good saying that but i have 15 new minutes of material uh so come see me tour <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see a lot of improvising and juggling <laughs> um I want to be a leading man in a show or movie, and I did that. I got the third lead in the movie, which is as low, I think fourth is as low as I could get without me saying that I didn't do it. But I am going, and hopefully, if uh, my show gets picked up, I'll be the lead in that. I want to get a new me toilet, a Japanese toilet that lifts up automatically. Looked into it; the reviews weren't great, so I, <laughs> so I changed my mind. But I'm still in the market for a good toilet that does some things electronically. Um. I wanted to maintain my life. I wanted to moisturize. I wanted to motivate. I fell off my moisturization a bit. So I could do do better on that. I wanted to get a new car. I did not do that. But I got a new chest. And that seems just as good. And it costs as much as a car. Um, <laughs> I wanted to balance my weed smoking. I did that a bit. I stopped smoking dabs for a while. I did take some dabs when I was laid up because of the surgery. Because I didn't want to take pain pills. Uh, but for the most part, my smoking is lessened. Uh, I still want to lessen it some more. I want to get it really like to control the daytime aspect. And again, just use it as a treat instead of a crutch. Um, I think that's just going to always be a work in progress. I think I'm always going to love weed. But in order for me to always love weed and keep it in my life, I have to keep it in a balance. So I'm going to keep working on that. And then I wanted to write in a journal every day. And I didn't do that at all. I wrote in a journal maybe every week and a half, two weeks. Um, so I'm going to try to do that better. Me and Robot, we decided to do a thing now that before we go to bed that uh, we're going to write for about an hour. Um, so I'm going to start stay committed to that because she, she writes as well. And, 
and um and she's very smart and she's good at providing um criticism for the things that i write and so i want to um i want to again it's part of the it's part of the staying committed is i want to stay committed to my writing committed to my health and committed to my projects and i don't want to add new things i don't want to do favors i don't want to go off and do somebody else's show just because th they think that my talent could help their show probably could but it could help my shit even better so <laughs> i want to focus on things those things i'll focus on the tv show that i'm making focus on writing a movie i want to focus on getting in more movies and i want to focus on this podcast and my show and just and and, and pr building my production company that i want to build with my friends just trying to build the cycle together and keep the team that's the main thing i'm most grateful about is that i really looked around and i was like man i got everybody around that i need sure hopefully you know somebody else will come in that can help and do some new things but for the most part the team is set i love my team i love everybody with us and I just want to really now focus on um, commitment, getting them W's, bringing home a championship. So that's how you make a vision board. We'll talk about my vision board. We'll bring in a couple of guests. We'll talk with them for a little bit. And then we'll let you enjoy your New Year's. And I, and I hope you have a beautiful day. We'll be right back. Do, 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 do. Did we start? I didn't know nice oh already yeah it just <laughs> okay. starts out the blue look at you you look great thank you you're looking like you're 36 i'm gonna say 36 because i'm 35. <laughs> oh, okay. well you know my goal is to look like your little sister oh well, you're working it. Okay. you're getting there you're getting there <laughs> hi mommy how are you doing i'm doing well i'm feeling real good, good. how about you i'm feeling great did i take this as yours or mine that's yours okay i didn't bring one. i would have drank it either way oh. <laughs> yeah, we got the same germs mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good for you to be here you are still you are our first guest and mm -hmm. you are still you are now one number three you're number three and most popular okay of all the, of the 20 episodes yeah but i get the distinction of being the first one yeah the first right. guest mm -hmm. and it's welcome back thank you i'm glad to be here so we'll keep it quick we're not gonna you know what it is there's our vision board party today you're mm -hmm. making a delicious healthy chili for mm -hmm. us and we're eating healthy and doing great things do you have a good um holiday season oh christmas was beautiful yeah mm -hmm. it was wonderful low-key went to a nice house party and had a wonderful time there um i had a girlfriend come visit from chicago we enjoyed each other's company and just enough time to have fun but not enough time to get on each other's nerves so it was great that's important in any friendship mm -hmm. is to know who your friends with and know how much you can take oh yeah, <laughs> yeah two, maybe four days that's it <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have that balance mm -hmm. okay well let's get right into it so we're basically gonna ask four questions and then we'll let you get back to the party okay shoot okay so the first one is uh what what are you proud of that you accomplished in 2018 what are you what are the things that make you happy in 2018 well that well, one thing is that i um got on a regular schedule of exercise and i've been also incorporating changing my diet um and thereby you know i noticed uh that i feel so much better so i know it's, it's probably and it's little things that i notice like um i just we were in the kitchen i just saw you bend over to pick up a thing out of my little lunch bag thing mm -hmm. and uh just the way that you like was just so spry and the way you picked it up I was like you look like you like I would have no I, I would if I just watched you from afar I would have no idea how old you are like well you say that like I'm a hundred years no nah, I don't mean it like that <laughs> I mean it as in like I'm like oh is she 20 is she 30 is she 40 is she 50 oh, yeah, like yeah. Even you you walk around very spry and very well and the trainer works with me like on functional exercises you know how to um you know, bend correctly and, and strengthening your back and your abs, strengthening my booty. Mm -hmm. So, well, what exercises? Let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit. What exercises are you doing? Because I feel like that's something that I mean, I mean, you're. I hope you don't mind me saying your age. You're a sixty two year old woman. I'm, yeah, no, I don't and mind at all. I'm sixty two. You're out there with the ropes, and you're out there yep. doing squats. So tell tell people what your what your exercise routine is like. 
Well, we do. I, I work with them two days a week um, with the trainer. Um, we do upper body one day and then we do lower body the next. We do like, you know, squats and um, a lot of balance exercises. And, um, you know, then I do some lifting weights and I've started to increase the weight and lower the reps because he noticed I'm getting stronger you know and uh, then the other days I try to do something if it's just do the treadmill at a 10 percent incline and maybe uh, 3.5 speed and then some days I will also do a few of the um, weight exercises on the weight bench and I walk the dog so I just try to stay a little more active and how has that been helpful for you how's that being in, like for when your friends visit or, or my aunts come and visit. Oh, they jealous as hell. <laughs> That's what I was hoping to hear. Yeah, they a little jelly. <laughs> when my sister said, oh, you, you look so skinny. Now I'm anything but skinny. I have muscle. So I think, you know, um, the exercises have helped with building muscle in the right places and losing some fat. My goal is to possibly lose maybe 25 pounds more and that put you around what 50 pounds yeah that put me around 50 pounds and um of total loss and then maybe you know gain like five pounds of muscle Mm -hmm. yeah so that um I can, you know, because I do like to eat. I find that, you know, I have to exercise in order to, but I like to eat well. I like to eat good foods, foods that are good for me. But I do, you know, like to have, not to be so restrictive in my eating in terms of. You don't be restrictive as me. Yeah, in terms of, yeah, (laughs) gaining weight or something. But I want to be, you know, I know you all, your goal was to have a pool and have girls in bikini around the pool. I'm going to be one of those bikini girls. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This summer. I guess I can live with that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Me and your your auntie. Me and my auntie and robot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, we can't be out there with her. <laughs> no, no, we got to be the only two out there with. <laughs> uh, that's I like, yeah, yeah, that's what I like about it. She come around in a bikini and do make other girls pack it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like you say, I'm 62 years old. Yes, so. yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other accomplishments you're proud of this year? Um. That's the biggest and, and most, you know, other than mm-hmm. that, I've just been, I'm, I'm proud that I, you know, learned to relax. Mm. I've got that down to a science, Talk you know that. that. Talk yeah. about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've learned to um, be happy in my in my station. You know, I I thought I, you know, always I had, had gotten to a mode of always having to go for it, go for it, go for it, you know, as y'all growing up and always having to. And then, you know, I realized I'm a blessed woman. I can relax with my life and enjoy it, you know. And then I was thinking, you know, being and that's a, why you you're stoned in the pool house watching Castaway. Yes, whatever I want to do, that's what I do, and nothing I don't want to do. Beautiful. So. <laughs> that's a beautiful place to be. People fight their whole life to yeah, get there. That's my philosophy now. And then also, you know, I had issues with being a breast cancer survivor. You always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I just had to, you know, finally just put that out in my head and realize I'm healthy, you know, and, and quit living my life like waiting for something else to happen. Mm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Okay. People you're grateful for this year. Oh, I'm grateful for you, of course. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful for my grandson, you know, watching him grow and develop and turn into a, the young man that he is, handsome young man, kind and. Mm. sweet and helpful and smart i'm thankful for my daughter your sister and i'm thankful for that to expand our family with her husband alex and also that she's gonna bless me with another grandbaby Mm. and i'm looking forward to that i'm excited about being a fun uncle because i think i am just built for that yeah i think (laughs) any anyone is built to be a fun uncle that's me (laughs) i'm excited yeah i'm excited too i feel like i should take up knitting but 
you know, <laughs> you know the grandma thing, mm-hmm. you know. But um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited about having a new grandbaby. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then you know we got robot in our lives. I'm excited about her. You know, um, yeah, I like her a lot. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. It's good that we're both on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because <laughs> other ones, I didn't even want to know their names. I'm like, Yo, everybody was, hey, baby. Well, some mm-hmm. of them I didn't know their names. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah. I was new at new new at being slightly famous. Um so <laughs> uh, you you got any more you wanna get out or you wanna move over to the next question? Go to the next question. Okay. Um what is uh, a thing that you're either disappointed about or a thing that you or a trait that you don't want to carry into twenty nineteen or, or thing something that you consider a a, a failure of twenty eighteen that you wanna to address? That's a hard one for me because, you know, things have been pretty wonderful in my world. Um, you know, I like to be more, um, more active and giving back um, as far as maybe doing some volunteer work or, um, you know, just getting involved with the, a cause that I, I feel passionate about, mm-hmm. you know, I would like to find something that would, you know, give me a little more purpose. Yeah, yeah. that'd be fun. I think there's a couple places I really like that I volunteered at on occasion that you, you might, I think you might like this place called School on Wheels. Mm-hmm. That's a uh, um, after school program and, and like shelter for homeless youth in downtown LA mm-hmm. and they're always looking for, for people so that might be something interesting. I might know you more you have uh, you probably maybe want to use your nursing background um, but I think that's a great idea. I think it's a mm-hmm. great idea. Um, and then last question um, 2019 2019 vision board goals what do you can give me a few what do you what do you want what do you want to see in 2019 from from the from the from the Funches family? Well, I already said you, you, I'd like to see be the grandma in the bikini. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'd like to do some, some more traveling. Um, I'd like to learn, you know, some Give Spanish. Me specifics. Give me specifics. You know. I'd like to go to Spain. Mm-hmm. And I would also like to go to Japan. I'm interested in going to Australia. <laughs> And, um, but you know, I know it's, it's a lot of places I want to go and, but at the same time, I also want to go back to Chicago, see, see, you know, my, my old friend who was, you know, she's like 82 years old. And then my auntie, she's a senior as well. You know, you can't be gone from your old people too long. Mm -hmm. You always feel like, Oh Lord, (laughs) you know? So I just, there's a lot of things I'd like to do this year. I think they're found all very possible. I think so too. Yeah, nothing yeah. outrageous. No, let's get them done. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, thanks for stopping in. Um, enjoy the vision board party. Thank you for your chili. And everything You're welcome. You provided. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for everything you've done this year to keep this house afloat and keep things in order while I'm out traveling all the time and. And thank you for being very nice to robot and stuff when you know she's coming in and. It can be uncomfortable for her sometimes, you know, but the fact you guys really hit it off very well and and that really makes me happy. Yeah. I mean she has a disposition that's sort of like she blends and meshes with us. Mm-hmm. You know? She fits she, in. Yeah, yeah. She reminds me a lot of, of Jocelyn. Jocelyn when I talked to her today, that your sister Jocelyn, she says, um, Oh well, I know you have to do something with your new daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I said, who? The dog? No. I said, why do you say that? Okay, say your name. Oh, (laughs) robot. She said, robot, because you're robot this and robot that. I know you like her. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all just need to know there's enough mommy to go around. Yeah, well, if her husband can call you mommy, Mm -hmm. then she's got to get used to you guys getting along. Because I didn't like that either. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, know. I know. Everybody loves mommy. Yeah. You know, you got a good one. You got you, you know, you get a little you want you want to get overprotective. Mm-hmm. So uh, and I got a good one. So thank you for coming oh, by. Thank you. I appreciate that, Kyle. Of course, my Ron. <laughs> you can call me whatever you like. <laughs> okay. Enjoy All the right. party. All right. Thanks. We'll be right back with another guest. Who will it be? I don't know. I'm going to go downstairs to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's our buddy Sean. Or you know him as X Pac. Thanks for coming. Happy New Year's, buddy. Happy New Year, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you leaned in with the radio voice. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I'm just it. checking myself out in the reflection on my uh, face because of that I mean, light. You look great. You, you're a little overdressed, uh, but I'm assuming maybe you're going to another party after this? No other plans, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're going to win best dress. Did, your house is in your... New Year's Eve party is worthy of me getting. I love done it. Up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's one thing I'm grateful for. I mean, we've we've have we've been friends for a while, but um, I feel this year our friendship's really kind of grown more yeah. and more to the point where you you know you're coming over for Thanksgiving and for for, for New Year's and uh, and uh, you feel like a part of the family. And I mean, I don't I don't want to put that pressure on you if you don't feel the same way. <sighs> but <laughs> I do, Ryan. <laughs> good I'm i brought just, i brought my i brought my family to your yes, house yes absolutely so. absolutely um so we got the party just kicking in the gear so well, let's get through this um uh, i'll ask you the questions right away uh number one uh what, what uh what are the things that you are proud of that you accomplished in 2018 That's a tough one for me this year, Ron. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Why? Uh, you know, there's been some, there's been some uh, obstacles and potholes and bumps in the road mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of them, there's just, you know, they come along and, you know, some of them are our own fault. Yes. So, uh, uh, the, the my own fault stuff is just, you know, um, procrastination, Ron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with yeah. the capital P. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got. I mean, that's the whole thing. That when you procrastinate, everything builds, 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 yeah. and it's way bigger than it yes. was if you just fucking handled it. Yeah. And it sucks. Yeah. But see, there's some of the things um, that I push under the rug because, you know, even though I've dealt with a lot of things, still revisiting a lot of that yeah. stuff, or even yeah, some of the new fun. stuff is just yeah. like, Ugh. of course. You know? No. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but you I, know, here's the thing, Ron. I, I still have a lot of stuff I look at and I'm like really grateful for. So Well, that's what we're talking yeah. about. Give me one. Yeah. Uh but like I mean things like and they all like at this point, you know, um uh you know, staying healthy meant like not you know, even though I've had a lot of uh stressors this year n- not falling off the wagon nice nah, you know well kind of if you if you count like shitty food <laughs> which we yeah do. man which we do and I, and we I'm both fell off it. the wagon this year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think i remember because we were at starcast together and yes. normally normally i kind of look towards you to see what you're eating to see mm-hmm. to make sure because i'm like oh, i'm not going to go out of bounds especially if sean's really in bounds but you were you were right there with me <laughs> i got a text from you that deep dish i got pizza. this pizza up here in my room do you want to come up <laughs> no that wasn't you that was someone no else. that was me no, you had the pizza but you didn't offer it to me i just no, ate it ate once it. i got there. <laughs> you were trying not to be a shitty influence yeah i was trying to be a shitty influence but i um, mean that's also we had other friends there and we i think each of us had one slice yeah. and then we let them eat the rest and then i went and threw it up in my room when i got there <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta be proud of the of your podcast. The thing I am continue going on. That's being more and more successful. Yeah, um, you gotta. Wow, you shouldn't have to be telling me what I what I should. If you can't think of it, I will because yeah. I know you and I will tell you yeah. what I see. And I see 
I, if I was you, I'd be proud of the podcast. It's consistent. You're consistently doing it, and you're doing a great job. People like it. I would be proud of the amount of respect. When you get this yearly, but it seems more and more and more, especially this last year, there's been a tremendous amount of respect in the wrestling community towards you as far as um a being a good guy b being a good wrestler c having a good mind for wrestling and helping other people and when i i said this when i see how not even there's a difference like you know if it was the, we get it if it's the undertaker stone cold whatever we i we get that why yeah. other people would come in when you come in a room you know you, you're european ic champ you've done so many shit but you you know not a world never was a world title holder or anything like that but the when you walk in a room, the way that other wrestlers light up when they see you is something I think that you should be proud of. Oh well, yeah, and and I am, and I'm more than being proud of that. I'm like really grateful for it. You know, um, those are the things that you, you know. should be grateful. And I understand the choice in words there, but I think proud should be a part of it because it's 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 an, it's it's not an indicator of like luck or an indicator of just random things that you did right. this is an indicator of the life long work that you put in mm -hmm. and how people think of you wholly yeah. and when they think of you wholly they they go like here here's a guy who could have a good match with anybody and then had x pac heat and, uh -huh, and then put right. poop in people's bags yeah <laughs> 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 uh, oh shit do you have another thing that you're proud of if not i'll tell you another thing oh i have of. i have a few things okay. um uh, you know and this lady i met and uh she's my girlfriend now and she's mm -hmm. a great lady that would and, be the next thing yeah and uh and she's also really good about pointing out uh things i should be proud of yeah so that's good that's that's, that's uh if you've been in enough relationships like i have you know sometimes that's not the case with exactly. a significant other they're more yeah. than happy to point out your faults yeah. instead of telling you how good you are yeah. and, and the things you should be proud of it's one thing i love about my girlfriend robot is that she from very one of the very first things she told to me was like i see how hard you work and that really hit me hard because a lot of, you know, me and chill, smoke pot. A lot of people think I'm like, even though I do so much shit, people are like, oh, he's chilling late. You really do, Ron. I, I know. Yeah, and it's really easy to get the impression that you might not if yeah. if you just saw a tweet here and there or something. Yeah. That had something But it's to not do. for people to know exactly. the whole but I know. I, you're thing, always you know? busy as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, but good. enough. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, oh shit. No, but the relationship is that I'm really grateful for. Uh, my relationship with my children is is, is uh, it's really gotten stronger. Really, you know. Uh, honestly, like in life, that was like the one thing that I really needed uh, to fix to have any kind of happiness and peace of mind, and that feels like it's getting stronger every day. Isn't that funny to really think about because, you know, you were in wrestling at the height of its its popularity, and which means the height of its fame, and you have all these things and all this access and this money and these good things, but the thing that if you don't have that base, if you don't have this thing in your life, like you, it, you, you it's hard to feel successful. Yeah. It's hard to move on yeah. knowing that a part of you, when it's your children especially, that is a part of you you know isn't going well and that makes me makes me very happy to know that your relationships yeah. are getting better and better because i mean i know you're getting better and better you know yeah, for sure so and i'm glad yeah. that um and there's we've talked about this in the past i don't want to dig too deep into personal shit uh but there's a time period where you were doing better and you still had to wait for them to believe you know and rightfully so rightfully so and that's not just with my children. I mean, that's with WWE, or because you know you could be you know you can get it like you can get six months behind you, mm -hmm. boom, and then just fall completely flat on your face, mm -hmm. you know, and fall harder than you fell ever the first time, or the times before. Yeah. So like yeah, and and especially with my kids, you know, Ron, uh, um, 
you know, they got disappointed so many times and mm -hmm. so many false got starts, if that's up. the right way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, this time, mm -hmm. you know, I promise, I'm sorry. Those words, zero, they had zero, uh, you know, weight with my children. Mm. So, but yeah, no, like, so yeah, all these things are, are, are great. You know, my, like, I, like you said, my show, uh, just being, being a part of the industry and the industry still wanting me to be a part of it. Yeah. Right. That's beautiful. Right. Because that's so many people that that doesn't happen to. No. And a lot of it's their own doing, you know, well, most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Get the old Ellsworth. <laughs> 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 uh, okay people that you're grateful for this year i assume that yeah. your new lady would probably be on the top yeah. of that list yeah her uh talk you know, a bit more you don't have to put her name out there but talk a bit more about her talk about what why you're grateful for her uh she's incredibly intelligent uh uh really um really compassionate Em empathetic and, and s sympathetic even if she can't like relate right mm -hmm. or whatever if that makes any sense no I got it because there's a lot of things that she can't relate to when it comes to me yeah <laughs> 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 I still laugh about it we talk we make fun of it with Gabe sometime where because Gabe's newly single yeah and uh he sometimes he'll get down on his self-esteem because he lives in a living room and all that and I was like man Gabe you don't you're a good guy and that's all that matters yeah especially in this market out here today when there are so many shitty guys that if you were just a good guy women will over look a lot and then i'll bring you up i go like you see pocket now and his girl like pocket girl's <laughs> black he has to go i did this 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 and this and yeah. oh yeah i also did black <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's gotta be like mm. Let me think he about doesn't this. do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's how rough it is for women <laughs> yes, especially black women <laughs> But she found a good man, and oh, that's—I mean—that's really kind of the strength and the beauty of a woman, mm -hmm. where they can look past your past and your faults and the things you've done before, and they can find who, who yeah. you are now. And 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 you know, uh, and she's not a civilian, you know. The, you know what I mean by that. Yes, and of uh, she didn't know what I meant when I told her she wasn't a civilian. <laughs> she knows now. Yeah. Uh, she works in the industry. Yeah, and. Uh, and so she has her own thing and she's really, she's great at it. Yeah, she absolutely, you is. know, she's brilliant. Yeah. And, uh, and she has like that kind of respect in her industry, like I do in, in mine. Yes. And absolutely. So she does. Yeah. And so I get to be proud of her too. And that's important. Yeah. I think that's one of the things I talked about that with Reggie Watts before is that I feel as you, you know, there's just a shift as you get older and sure. When I'm in my twenties, I didn't care about, um, being with some girl that I respected, I care about how they looked, yeah. you know, and, but now that I'm in my 30, it, to me, there's nothing more, um, important or, or, or makes me happy to look at my, my partner and be like, that's my girl, mm -hmm. that's my girl. And she's great. And look at her shine yeah. and look at how cool she is and look how smart she is and look how funny she is and look how same thing, kind and smart and just all these things and how she makes me, um, she, I, like, cause all the times people are like, you're so nice, you're so nice, and you're so kind. I spend the time with, with Robot where I'm like, fuck, I need to be kinder. You know, she makes yes. me second guess. Yeah. I do, I think, I think things like that a lot. And I'm always, um, I'm always worried, Ron, that I'm, I'm hurting feelings or that I'm not paying enough attention mm -hmm. or, you know, all these things. And I think, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I'm always honest with you, Ron. <laughs> in general, but you know, yeah, figure, you're figure, on, you're, I mean, you're honest in yeah. in most cases. Figure of speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, a lot of that comes from me doing my best to in the past to pay attention and do all these things and still being told, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that I've fallen short. Mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. you can really get a complex yeah absolutely you know, about things yeah my first so. marriage by the end of it i i thought i was a shitty dude with a tiny right, maybe dick. i am a piece of shit yeah yeah and then it took me a while to go like okay well i got a pretty big dick and uh -huh. i'm a nice guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
but you hear it enough you hear if you're in a bad relationship enough and and when people hear about bad like it's a cycle usually you're mean to each other you know and so it's like you just shouldn't be around each other if if the the person you're with isn't lifting you up isn't make isn't your biggest supporter isn't the the person in your corner while the rest of the world is trying to beat you down then you shouldn't be with them because the world will beat you down you don't need your partner to do it you know and um um, I just can't get this image out of my head of you standing naked in front of a mirror holding your dick in your hand going, I got a big dick and I'm a nice guy over and over. <laughs> like a fucking mantra or something. It was part of my therapy. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, look in the mirror. Look at this dick. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. I'm grateful for my mother. Nice. I, I love mom, your mom. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I do too. And uh, and I really, uh, I, I need to make a better effort on talking to my mom. You got to. Yeah. You got to while, while they're there. You know. Yeah. So I agree with you there. Your mom and I'm. You know. Um, I don't know I'm much, but she sure asked her to come out and visit. You know, she, she got come yeah. visit, and, and those, you know the complicated history with, with you guys in general, just like most relationships. But I think as we get older and we make our own mistakes, it becomes a lot easier to forgive our parents yeah. and to be like, "Look, you're my mom, you're my par- my dad, or whatever." Hey, Unless when, they're when still a parents trying to do it like on their own. Yes, like, uh, it's going to be some complications. Yes. With the uh, relationship with their absolutely. Children. I mean, me and yeah. my mom. You know, you see us now. You know, we're, we're as close as could be. Um, you know, four or five years ago was not the case. You know, oh, wow. so it takes a lot of growth, and it took her. Seeing, it took it took me growing mm-hmm. and 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 living up to my potential, and it took her um, kind of letting go and seeing that I wasn't. No matter what, I wasn't gonna switch my job. You know, I wasn't. Gonna, I was like something like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I got you. And, you know, yeah. and just past stuff. You know, her being a single parent and working all the time, and she wasn't around. Mm-hmm. There were some things I was resentful for in the past, but once I became a parent, it was like, oh yeah. fuck. Especially once I became a single parent, yeah. I was like, oh oh fuck, mom, I see, I see now how hard it is. Mm-hmm. And so you know, you 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 live and you learn. You live and you learn. Let's move over to any disappointments this year. Anything that, um, any traits you you want to cut out this year? Um, leave it behind in 2018. Hmm. I have a few. I don't know if I want to share them. You don't have to share them. <laughs> if you want to share one, if you want, uh, are you are you can move along. Uh, yeah, no. Um, well, I'm just thinking it's helpful. Like, I mean, uh, I'm really thinking about uh, taking my. T- the Twitter app off of my phone, Ron. Mm-hmm. Like getting caught up in that negative shit. I've been thinking about and that. letting it like like, and it's insidious. It gets in you. Like I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah. For letting myself get caught up in things that I can't control. Yeah, I remember really thinking about moving into. I think I still need to have it as far as like, just promotion based things yeah. and stuff like that, but. Uh, I, I'm going to put on my vision board is to just stay out of the comments. Yeah. Like, especially like, like ones that you, like you weren't like involved in, like somebody else's timeline, yeah. somebody yeah. else's mansion. And next thing you know, you're in the middle fuck. of a Twitter fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth it. You don't change anyone's mind. No. Um, so I agree with you. I think that's shit. You didn't want to say one, but I think that's a great one that anyone can relate to is that to be, I was, I want to be more real, real world productive and less yeah. worried about the social media world because one thing I learned is that it doesn't really mean shit. Like if it, if the social media world meant shit, then like we would probably have a new president by now. Louis C.K. wouldn't be doing comedy. A it, lot it, of things. You know, be all yeah. these Everybody's like, oh, rabble, 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 don't do this. But it's like... And, real world real world don't give a fuck mm-hmm. so you just keep it moving yeah. and and if your social media life sucks you just put your phone yeah, down throw it away <laughs> <laughs> oh guess what i'm still me <laughs> 
and that's what i'm learning just work and work on that regard mm-hmm. uh, okay and then our last question is this is your first time at the vision board party yes. you, and thank you for coming i've never I know, had a vision board in my life i um, know it's probably stepping a little bit outside your comfort zone but, and i appreciate that that means know, a lot that means that takes a lot of strength and usually great things do not happen inside of our comfort zone not at all not at all um so let's just maybe talk about uh, um give me two one or two goals that you have for the year or for for the you know short future or the long term long term future any any it can be long term short term whatever just give me some goals uh well one of the things i'm gonna i'm gonna rewind just for a second because it's part of answering mm-hmm. this as um disappointed and let myself get out of shape physically mm-hmm. as much as I have. I think I still look good. You still look great. Uh, but it's, uh, I know what you mean because it's like same as me where, yeah. where I'm like, oh, I look great, especially if I look at pictures of 350 yes. pound me. But then when I go and look at the summer pictures of me when I was 211, yes. and I'm like, fuck, I'm not there. I'm right. not there anymore. And I might look in shape or whatever, but it's how I feel. Yes. You yes. know? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's a huge part of, um, you know, you know, uh, the the food we eat and and uh, and our exercise are the two uh, most effective antidepressants and the two most underutilized. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. So uh, yeah, that I like that. That uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna get back in shape. I'm gonna have more matches. Okay. I decided I wasn't gonna have any, and mm-hmm. I'm sticking to that. I'm gonna make the ones I do have be like nothing against the like. Just your average yeah, no, we got independent spot show match, but yeah, no, you you've know, been doing it too something long. a little you've bit You've been more. doing it too long to yeah. just do random shit. Yeah, and yeah. I have a few outstanding health issues mm. that I need to uh, get taken care of. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. I will take care of them. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it's it's you know, some of that's the things that you can keep sweeping under the rug. Yeah. And well, eventually... those are the things. I mean, like that's what, what my surgery. You know, it's something that it was elective, and I could have chose not to do it, but it was something that I was like, oh, if I don't do it now in my mid thirties, it's going to be less likely that I'm going to do it in my forties right. and fifties or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just want to go ahead and yeah. get it done and focus. And 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 it really did. Once I saw it, it motivated me to be like, fuck, let's let's get back in 100% shape and push it to where we want to go. So I, I, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, man, and you can push push it off for a while, but as you get older, it's gonna collapse yeah. on you, and we don't want that. You're, 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 you may not be, or as we know, the amount of years you have wrestling later are way less than the ones you've already done. You know, you're like you're closer to the end than the beginning, yeah. no doubt about it. But your mind and your ability to create and your knowledge of entertainment is extremely valuable. Like you're a very, very bright man and you're very bright when it comes to entertainment and it comes to manipulating audiences and the things that you are. And that transfers from wrestling to comedy to writing to anything so yeah. I don't I think you should not worry about it and just I think about it a lot I'm not sh- I I can't say as I, I worry about it I think about it a lot though uh, I I, um, well, it's, I, I want to create more stuff Ron I want to be more of a creator can. you absolutely yeah. can I believe yeah. I, I have things in my mind and yes. I have a couple little things like little uh Things like that are like you know we're just working on. Mm-hmm. For, I hundred you know, percent believe in it, but I don't think bumping is is it. You no, know? no. Your 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 creative your your creativity is your mind is what's going to be. Yeah. And I think and we'll, I was watching a thing on Sports Center recently, and it just talked about um, how difficult it is for um, athletes to retire how, how difficult it is for musicians to um stop touring once they're past their um because it's what we do we get what it you it's, do. it's 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 programmed into the hard it's drive you but you gotta learn to uh, to evolve i mean that's the last that's the last thing you want to be though is the fucking 60 year old dude sure. out there you know yeah. and so you you have enough time to start a new career and learn and um create from it and so i i encourage you to do that yeah and i and i'm I, that's what i that's what i plan on doing uh part of me just like still wants to you know feel that uh feel that 
Pop. Push. Yeah, you yeah. know, man. You know that live mm-hmm. crowd. Yes, I do. Yeah. I love, <laughs> I love it. But I think, but that's, I think. I just that, don't want to have to do it. I think that. No. Nah that feeling yeah. is what's going to determine what's going to be the next thing for you because you'll, you'll stumble into something some other and way, you'll, yeah. you'll feel the feeling and you'll know this is and what I want. Do live crowd. And, I, and you know, I mean, there's still plenty of opportunities to do things in front of live audiences. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. You're not done with that by a long shot. Yeah. Any other goals? Uh, oh, fuck. I did have one other one and I can't remember what it was. Fuck it. We'll That's a real important goal I got there. <laughs> we'll figure it out at the party. Um, thank you for coming. We'll get the party started. Um, I, I just, again, as always, man, I'm just really, really proud and grateful. Um, not only just because, you know, I grew up watching you and then just enjoy, and then it was nice to meet you and then feel like this guy's cool as fuck and hang out and smoke pot together. But, He's two years younger than me, but he grew up Ah! watching me. No, Ah! not really. (laughs) And then, uh, but in general, just to see, like, you're one of the most honest people I've ever met. You're one of the most just genuine, nice guys. And you're, you're, um, and you don't give a fuck. That's what I love about your Twitter and your shit like that. When people get into your thing, you're like, you will tell people exactly how you feel. And I, I love that about you. I try to, like, thank you. And I try to still be like that. I just try to pick and choose more, like, you know. Yeah. There's yeah. people on Twitter that have done some shit, Ron. But, and I mean some serious shit, and are smart as fuck and could be debating, like, real, like, you know, people that you should be out there, you know, uh, you know, uh, opposing with better ideas against. Mm-hmm. Not like a- every single person not that an egg. wants to challenge for the title. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't need to be, ch- yeah, you don't yeah. need to be arguing with eggs and, and Russian bots. bots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 <That's so terrible. laughs> All right, man. Well, here's to a happy, healthy 2019. Let's get the yeah, uh, sure. health goals taken care yeah. of and, and onward to upward with, with you and your, your beautiful, wonderful girlfriend. Oh, thank you, Ron. All right, let's happy get back New to the Year, party. We'll get, uh, I think we have one more guest and then we'll wrap it up. Be right back. And we're back with our final guest of the Vision Board Party 2018 slash 2019 extravaganza. And we're wrapping it up. Well, who better to wrap it up with than my best friend himself, Gabe Dinger. Thanks for having me, Rob. Cool. Well, you're here every day. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me come upstairs, Rob. You're welcome, <laughs> Gabe. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, great year with you. It's been really fun. Um, overall with you, the thing that pops out of my head automatically is that I got to thank you for all your help with the special and the work you did to help me prepare and get ready for it. In particular, the one thing that sticks out in my head for sure is the you came up with that rock bottom tag for the rock joke. You and- always say that, but I feel like in my memory of the conversation, I feel like you were starting the joke and I said something along the lines of, does he have like a special move or a slogan? And then, so I feel like rock bottom was still you. It was just me that put the seed of the idea to, okay. to tag well, a special move. I take my move. compliment back then. Well, I, I wanted to wait for a, my own. I wanted to wait for a public uh, chance. To say it. So then you're like, oh yeah, that's right. And then never mentioned it again. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the credit. Well, you did <laughs> overall. I mean, you were there with me, all of my sets and coming up with things. And you were there when, um, you know, when I wanted to do it for Netflix and they said no and you saw how you were there through the distraughtness of that <laughs> and then uh, ended up at Comedy Central and being happy and there for the taping and you did everything and so um, you know I just really couldn't have done it or especially couldn't have done it as well uh, without you so I just wanted to say thank you well it was it was my pleasure I mean watching you you know build that hour was tremendously educational you know seeing you you know i knew your your old material from us coming up and so to see something come from you know 15 20 minutes to an hour and then watch that hour change i mean there were you know the vancouver story isn't even in there and that was such a big part of the building up of it so just seeing the evolution of it it was so helpful you know for me as a comic Okay. Especially now thinking of, of doing a new set for myself. Nice. Well, thank you. 
Okay, well, party's in full swing, so let's get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Do this now. Um, the four questions are, number one, uh, what are you proud of accomplishing in 2018? Uh, I'm a, I'm proud of uh, just how much work, you know, actual show business type work that I've been able to keep up doing and, and maintaining and uh, getting more comfortable in L.A. and finding my footing, uh, not needing as much help as I have in the past, but still needing help. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm just I'm really proud of uh, I feel more professional than than I ever have. That's good. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> and you should be. I'm proud of you. I'm proud, of, and you probably don't bring it up. I'm proud that, like, you, I mean, you had a good relationship, and then you, you're now single, and it's hard for you, and now you're going through it and being strong, and you're in a long, what, seven years, right? Five years. Five years, still a long time. And, and for you, it's be scary it's gonna be scary for you and for you to come out there and still be strong and, and stuff is uh, something that i am proud of you about thank you yeah no i mean you know i'm never it's always good to fall in love and so I, i'm it was you know it's been hard but but it was i'm thankful for it it was a very special time okay um people that you're grateful for this year People I'm grateful for. Well, Ron Funches, of course. <laughs> but no, for real. I mean, you're you're such a good friend. I mean, and and not just in that, like, you know, you you take me on the road and stuff, but you're you make me be accountable for myself. You know, you're you're supportive when I need support. You're you push me when I need to be pushed and you call me on my bullshit when it needs to be called. And that to me is the definition of a good friend. Someone who's there for everything and not just the easy stuff. Um, and I mean, really, I mean, there's a lot of your family, you know, and then the way you share your family with me, you know, I'm very close with my family. So to get to, to spend time with your mom and your son and, you know, get to feel like I'm part of a family still means a lot to me. So, I mean, not just you, but, you know, your mom uh you know chris malcolm uh robot you know i mean everyone has been very important um you know and, and just you know and then my mom you know she's always she may not understand what i'm doing out here but she's she still supports it and still gets behind me um you know melanie myra you know we both who mean a lot to both of us uh, you know, they both lead into that first question that why I feel more professional. They, they help me, uh, be accountable. Um, who else? I mean, all of our friends and Carlos has been going out, going to open mics with me just so I have someone to sit with. Um, yeah, I wish I had more time to prepare cause I'm sure there are so many more people there are lots of people. You know who you are. <laughs> okay. Third question. Um, thing that you feel that was a failure in 2018 or a disappointment or a trait about yourself that you didn't want to carry into 2019? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I, um, <laughs> I had, I was drinking alone for a bit. I um, think I might remember. You might remember I lost a toenail from it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's growing back nicely. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, it's, it, it, it kind of ebbs and flows out here and, and, you know, I'm in a place in, in life where things are kind of uncertain and, and I was just having a hard time falling asleep. So I would just, I would drink by myself to fall asleep and, and that's certainly not the way to do it. Um, but I, and I've cut that back, you know, completely, at least by myself. I had some wine earlier. <laughs> it's New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve. Um, and with that, just, um, getting, you know, there are times that I can just be kind of morose and I'll just be like, well, I'm just going to sleep all day. And so, uh, I think for 2019, my big thing is get up just constantly, whatever that means for the day, getting up and being present and even if i don't have anything planned for the day that doesn't mean i have nothing in that day because you never know you never know give yourself the opportunity yeah yeah and and that mindset's just uh 
a dangerous mindset. And I mean, look, if you're feeling sad, feel sad. Don't be mm-hmm. like, I can never feel that. And I, you know, yeah, of course, you go through it, that, but, but go through it. Yeah, get through it. Yeah. And I, so, knew, I was noticing because I was like, when you first moved out here, I could call you at eight, eight thirty. <laughs> you were up when I was up. You know, I usually get up at six, and then I'd wait an hour, and I could give you a call, and then I'd call you at nine, call you at ten, eleven, noon. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> he's not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> and the no haircuts, like <laughs> maybe I should get a haircut regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I like those. They're definitely good traits to um, cut, and it's good to be self aware. Um, and then the last one, vision board goals, 2019. Uh, I love it. I mean, this is my third vision board party with you. Uh, the fourth year, the first year you did it, I wasn't out here and I was jealous. So I made my own vision board, uh, alone. And so now, um, now I feel like I'm getting a little better. You know, it's as the years have gone on, my vision boards have been more vague and it, they get more and more specific. specific, which is a big part of vision board. Mm-hmm. One of the main things is, um, if you if you are going to try to make a vision board and it's your first time doing one, the more specific the goal, the the better. Yeah. So if you're writing like, I want a new car, that's that's very very goal. What car do you want? Right. What car do you want? Because an '86 Honda Accord could be a new car to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that's something I found, you know, with mine and, and mine this last year was a, a collage where everything was cluttered together. So nothing had a real, it, none of it was clear. It was all just kind of a mishmash. And when I look at it, things did happen, but you know, it, it was again, kind of a mishmash. It wasn't, there was no structure. There was no order to it. So I think this year, um, I'm going to have a much more, specific and and formatted uh vision board so i can be real specific and i'm not kind of looking at all these images like what am i looking at here and and using better glue because uh money and a new bed fell off my vision board this year and i mean i did get a new bed but the money thing was yeah you didn't get no money no no (laughs) no. especially like right when it blew off was right when things got really tough and i was like well, fucking vision boards, they know. <laughs> <laughs> they know. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. That's a perfect way to end. Um, great 2018 with you. I look forward to building more with you, writing more with you, traveling more with you. I love it. Um, I talked to my therapist and was really like getting into it. And she's like, well, what do you do? And I was like, well, you know, I work and I do my, my stand up and I'm writing my shows and she's all like well who does your show oh I travel with my best friend and they also write with my best friend and she's all like fuck you got the life and it really took that her saying that to me to be like I have a really good situation here I love just going out and playing video games with you and some Rainbow Six or Overcooked and getting stoned and, and then having someone there with me when it's like in the morning when we got a deadline and we need to really write a project out you're, you're, you're right there and so I really appreciate you it, I, I, it is, I mean, I feel the exact same way. It is the greatest, the greatest, I, I don't even want to call it a job because it's just fun. I just love doing it. Well, here's some more fun in 2019. Absolutely, buddy. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vision board party. Um, maybe you listen to this while making your own vision boards. If not, Google them up, you know, ask me questions. You can email the podcast, getting better pod at gmail.com. Watch my special giggle fit january 4th 11 p.m comedy central do your boy a favor if you get any type of love or any help from this podcast watch that special dvr that special and then watch it again it's not streaming it's not a thing where it's going to be around forever if we don't make some type of pop off of it i mean that's fine that's fine i'll keep working i'll keep making things but what i really love to try to prove is that the message and the uh, things that i'm doing um, have a value and, and and can be popular and so uh, i don't think that's gonna happen all in one day i don't think that's gonna have uh, special two three four who knows but um we're building it up from here so if you guys can help me get the world word out you're all i got i don't got a big production value i got i got a uh, one public publicist but i don't really care for them that much and <laughs> <laughs> 
a weird way to fire him. <laughs> <laughs> Do better at your jobs, guys. Uh, except for the girl in New York, you're great. If you listen to this, don't think I'm talking about you. You're amazing. It's the rest of them drunk coke addicts. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for listening to the podcast. Bye.